So what will it be? Fin or feather? Water or wood? Cast or blast? At Historic Cabin Bluff in Southeast Georgia, the hunt has been on for nearly two centuries and it's just getting warmed up. Got some young dogs and we're working them in the yard, getting them used to seeing birds fly, things like that. I'm showing them what I'm asking before I ask them to do it. Because let's say that that uh, I was adopted and my parents spoke Japanese and I didn't, and they reprimanded me for something that they asked me to do and I didn't know what they're asking me to do. That leads to apprehension. In the show pup stage, I'm showing these dogs what I want them to do. We're trying to have the best dogs that you can have. A pointer on a flag may be more southern than the stars and bars. After all, the bird dog is a tradition as old as Dixie itself. It's the ideal logo for America's oldest sportsman's lodge. Thirty minutes north of Jacksonville, Florida, and five hours from Atlanta. Cabin Bluff is in tiny Woodbine, Georgia. It sits on the Intracoastal Waterway, a short run from the Atlantic. It was founded in 1827 as a private hunting club and has only been open to the public since 2010. Being private for that long was a uh, really a, a blessing for us because it allowed Cabin Bluff to not change until you reach the main compound and you see these cabins and in the background you see the Intracoastal Waterway and Cumberland Island and you have this really, this sense of wonder, where am I? You know, how did I miss this place living just down the road? Places like this just don't exist. They're not out there. 24,000 acres of pine, oak, marsh, millet, and vein-like tributaries fed by the Cumberland River. Cell phones aren't welcome here. Instead, the wild vintage vibe envelops you like an antique cocoon. We're in this environment where we're actually kind of the visitors. This habitat's been here for so many years, and the wildlife really call this home, and we're sensitive to managing that and enjoying it. Captain Ron Gibson, Cabin Bluff's hunting and fishing manager. His resume ranges from blue marlin to wild hogs. While the pointer may be the lodge's logo, the fishing at Cabin Bluff is impressive. 
and untapped. The fishing here, I think, is incredible. Um, you know, comparing it to most places, you get very, very little pressure. In a way, you wish everybody knew about it and wanted to come here, but kind of glad it's a little bit off the beaten path that not everybody knows about. It's just this little hidden gem. You walk out on our dock and it's just wide open. The activities here are varied, and sometimes the guests require as much training as the dogs. <laughs> there wasn't really a worst. I mean, it was all around pretty, pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cabin Bluff, one of the few lodges in the United States where a half-day trip afield is paired with a half-day of saltwater fishing. It's like the official resort of your bucket list. But first, guests should sharpen their skills with shooting instructor Troy Anderson. Pull. 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 Majority of people I get down here are men. Nothing against the male species. We don't listen, we don't take orders. That's why I prefer women, because they listen a lot better and they make better shoots. Oh, he ran over his head. There wasn't really a worst. <laughs> I mean, it was all around pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the PM, Ron takes us out into the Cabin Bluff fishery. Let's review the checklist. Fast, fuel efficient. As comfortable in skinny water as it is offshore. The Yellowfin 24 Bay. For power, the Mercury 350 Verado is the outboard of choice. The Simrad NSS 12 EVO 2 delivers HD structure scan and broadband sonar through its 12-inch multi-touch display. For rough, rugged, leak-proof, and long-lasting, it's Yeti and nothing else. Pin has the best in light tackle for inshore success. Costa has been making sunglasses specifically for the saltwater angler for 30 years. A custom fiberglass replica by King Sailfish Release Mounts captures your trophy catch down to the finest detail. We kind of figured out this jetty acts like a fence, so when you get those fish moving from south and coming up this way, they're just cruising up and down this jetty, whether it's on the ocean side or the river side where there's bait, and then just a place for them to hang out. This time of year, redfish ride the dramatically rising and falling tides to feed at oyster bars and in potholes and flooded marshes. Live baits usually score with greater frequency. That is on the smaller side, actually. Yeah. Generally, they're 38, 40 some inch fish, usually pretty good sized fish, but it's still a red. It's good to see them out here, though. Holy yeah. moly. This is probably the most sought after species here at the jetties as far as we get a really good window of six or eight months out of the year. 
that they're pretty plentiful, something to rely on for most of the year. Or a good in-between of tarpon fishing is a, generally a uh, nice, happy surprise. It's off to the quail fields. And then, a couple species that won't fit in a setter's mouth. People walking on the ground, dogs on the ground. Any shot I live on above, a safe shot. If you're on the right, straight in front to three o'clock. On the left, straight in front to nine. Whatever you do, do not shoot across one another or behind you. Good with that? Nice shot, Scott. Pretty much everybody that comes through here is going to want to go on a hunt. That's when that tarpon season ends and that summertime fishing of on the beach is over. I mean, this is a great way to transition in the wintertime, you know, the guide and quail hunts. And really, any good seasoned veteran quail guy is going to tell you for them, it has nothing to do with the birds, but it's all about the dogs. It's all about the dog work and the reward because they get to be like your children. So to see one, a young dog blossom out, get into that third or fourth year when they really start to put it all together, it's all about that dog work. Sharks, and there's no shortage of them. The nurse shark will lie motionless until enticed to feed. While they're mostly harmless, their acting chops are award-winning. When the camera's rolling, they do a great job playing the tough guy. This time of year when our water temperatures are really high, you're gonna probably have what we think is our highest concentration of fish. This is the time of year that most of the spawn is over with, so you don't have to worry about losing those fish for a few days to go offshore and then come back. And you've got such a diverse ecosystem, whether you're fishing in the creeks or in the marsh, or whether you're fishing in the sound, or whether you're fishing out in the ocean, you've got different places that you can go chase tarpon.
Summer in Southeast Georgia means poon sightings galore. But seeing them and boating them are two very different endeavors. The bay boat heads out into the Cumberland River. Cabin Bluff's pool umbrellas aren't visible from this spot, but the fuel bill isn't a backbreaker either. A bait jailbreak. They're being hunted by something big. Where the river's dumping out, there's a really shallow bar that cuts across right here and it dumps real deep to about 20 feet right here. So we're just trying to see if we can intercept those fish before they're moving their way up the river. Gentlemen, tarpoon. That's a pretty good fish, too. Coming at us. Woo! As a secret tarpon haunt and a place that's been preserved for hundreds of years, conservation is a core part of Cabin Bluff's DNA. We do a, a tournament called the Cabin Bluff Tarpon Cup, and it's a fundraiser to help the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. In the last few years, what we've tried to do for them is when we're catching tarpon, pulling some scales and help them with their DNA research. Last year, they started another program where they were putting trackers and fish so they could learn a little bit more about their migration patterns. It's great because the BTT, they, they'll come up and they help also educate guests and what they're doing. And I think it furthers their cause as well by having more people know what they're trying to accomplish and support their mission. Last family meal. Illuminated by stars and firelight. Steamed oysters and quail. to just carry on a legacy that was built ahead of you. And just like, you know, anybody that spends any time in the woods or in the outdoors, you always want to try to leave it in better condition than what you found it. So if we're able to take a legacy, keep building on it or keep pushing it forward or maybe make it just a little bit better just to be a part of it, be out here and do this every day, it could be worse. I, mean, I could be filming TV shows and standing behind a camera, right? <laughs> Seven hundred sixty-four seasons have passed since Cabin Bluff was established. Two centuries of quail falls, whitetail winters, redfish springs, and tarpon summers. 
a year-round adventure, which means you can do once in a lifetime, almost any time. So come on in, make yourself at home. The porch light was on before the light bulb was invented. Lord Willen and the Creek Don't Rise, Cabin Bluff will be open. Child that the soul rained on